Hello. As will be shown, the dissolution of the Soviet Union was one of the greatest catastrophes for the Soviet people and undoubtedly the rest of the world. This will be a case study of capitalism, exploring the transition from socialism to capitalism in former Soviet and socialist nations. This will be a general overview of economic development, public services, employment, education, healthcare, and many other facets necessary for a civilized existence. Just a little addendum for any Ukrainians watching. This video is not meant to demonize or insult Ukraine or the Ukrainian people. The sole purpose of this video is to show that after nearly 30 years of capitalism, Ukraine has only gotten worse and worse with no end in sight. Corruption, poverty, crime, homelessness, unemployment, and all sorts of other ills plague Ukrainian society. The only logical solution is socialism, to ensure that the wealth and labor of this great nation can be used to build up and glorify Ukraine and the Ukrainian people, not to line the pockets of international businessmen and oligarchs. Say no to both EU and Russian domination. Organize and build political power for Ukrainians so that no Ukrainian may go hungry, cold, or uneducated. First, I'll start with an analysis of economy. The transition from socialism to capitalism was difficult. A large majority of the population was plunged into a poverty unknown to the Ukrainian people. People struggled, and especially in rural Ukraine, many had to go by through working multiple jobs and bartering for the most basic, essential necessities. After the dissolution, the Ukrainian economy had faced a trend of continuous contraction of its economy. The economy of Ukraine has still not recovered since the dissolution of the Soviet Union, and as of 2016 is still hovering at only 60-70% the 1990 level. In fact, in 1993, Ukraine held the world record for its hyperinflated currency. If a nation has had over 27 years and billions poured into it and it still hasn't recovered or even reached its 1990 level, then something must be very wrong with the system. Thanks to socialism, Soviet Ukraine had undergone miraculous industrialization that launched it into the forefront of the world. It developed, engineered, and produced high-tech personal computers for civilian use and supercomputers for industrial and military use. It constructed nuclear power plants, civilian and military aircraft, cars, tractors, ships, submarines, all sorts of military equipment and weaponry. They produced everything from wheat and textiles to natural gas and traditional consumer goods. All was providing housing, employment, high quality medical care and education. Soviet Ukrainian production and exports contributed up to 50% of Soviet output in certain cases, and metal-oriented exports dominated the world market. In comparison, the current top four exports of modern-day Ukraine are semi-finished products of iron, corn seeds, wheat, and sunflower seeds, all of which are non-competitive in the world market, with most importers relying on cheaper Russian and Chinese iron, cheaper Southeast Asian agriculture, and cheaper South American ore. Smaller exports such as coal are also relatively uncompetitive. Under socialism, this wouldn't really matter, as these resources would be used to meet the needs and demands of the people. However, under capitalism, everything's for profit and profit only. This is just one of many examples in which a nation's resources that could both create a wealth of jobs for its people and simultaneously meet the nation's own demands is rendered null and pointless simply due to capitalism. In general, Ukraine experienced 118% of negative GDP growth and 72% of positive GDP growth, most of which was recovering from previous disastrous decline in GDP output, as can be seen on the graph. Uh, keep in mind that this isn't uh, this doesn't mean that the Ukrainian economy shrunk by 118.8%. I mean that consecutively over the years there's been 118.8% of negative GDP growth and only 72% of positive GDP growth to make up for all the negative GDP growth. Um, so in all in all, this totals at a net of 46.8% of negative GDP growth over a period of 27 years. This just goes to show that despite some years of uh, modern Ukraine's existence, um, Ukraine has showed impressive GDP growth. However, it doesn't really matter because other years have had much, much worse GDP growth. And if one year Ukraine has 10% or even higher, it doesn't really matter in the end. Housing construction, whether private or public, is saddening. More new housing complexes are being built in neighboring Belarus than all of Ukraine, despite it being a third of the size and having a quarter of the population. Whatever housing is being built in Ukraine, it is being built in the west of Ukraine and around Kiev, with next to nothing being built in the eastern half of the country. 
on a separate note um, regarding cars, car ownership, production, etc., um, something that's interesting is that the USSR had always been targeted for how tedious the process of obtaining a car was. In the context of the Soviet Union, though, these arguments were ill-placed as public transportation was efficient, common, and easy to use. In modern Ukraine, however, this is not the case, and cars are less obtainable than in the 1970s. Ukrainians now are buying fewer cars than the 1970-1990 period. In fact, the current car ownership hovers around 1 million people, 1 million owners, a good chunk of those being Ladas and, old, uh, and other old uh, um, cars. Not much of an improvement from Soviet days. The debt of Ukraine currently stands at 80% of its GDP, and interestingly, the budget going to repay this debt is shrinking by roughly 5% every year for the past few years. Traditionally, 60% of GDP is seen as an incredibly dangerous cutoff for growing economies such as Ukraine. Despite the current horrible economic situation Ukraine is in, the IMF has decided to ease up on Ukraine in order to keep it afloat. This being perfectly understandable, as Ukraine is currently an important pawn in Americans' geopolitical games. If they had not been so lenient, there is no telling how bad it could have gotten. Despite the honestly pathetic growth Ukraine has shown since 1990, it is believed that up to 40 to 50 percent, nearly half of the Ukrainian economy, is in black market dealings, which are notoriously illegal as to what is sold, how workers are being treated, what wages people earn, etc. can't be controlled very well, and it's also ridiculously flimsy, meaning it can fall apart any time. It should be very alerting when nearly half a country's economy can fall apart at any time. On top of all these problems, Ukraine is ranked as the 131st most corrupt country out of 173 countries, right behind Zimbabwe and the Ivory Coast. Recent attempts, if you can even call them that, to reduce corruption have failed enormously. Something to keep in mind is that, like other nations, Ukraine acquired natural gas to run many things. Since the dissolution of the Soviet Union, however, Ukraine was getting up to 80% of its natural gas from Russia at below market prices, mind you. This stopped only in 2008, but imagine if Ukraine could never have had such assistance. Imagine how much worse it would have done. Another interesting note is that most of the current growth Ukraine is capable of, through agriculture, metal industry, mining, etc., is due to leftover Soviet infrastructure, with very little new infrastructure being built. Concerning their relationship with the IMF, Ukraine is currently one of the largest borrowers in the world. The truly criminal thing about this is that the IMF has demanded some pretty horrible stuff in return from Ukraine, such as massive budget cuts to government programs and a 40 to 50 percent increase in gas utility prices. That being the gas used to heat your apartment, your shower water, the stuff that turns on your stove, etc. These criminal demands have and will continue to put poor Ukrainians in even harsher conditions, such as going through cold winters without heating and bathing with practically ice cold water. Even worse, the EU demanded that these cuts be made. However, even after borrowing billions of dollars, nothing has improved as most of the money was funneled into pockets of corrupt oligarchs, leaving Ukraine even further in debt and with nothing to show for it. Unemployment in Ukraine stands at around 10% despite plummeting economic activity. This value only reflects those actively looking for work, however, as some have given up altogether, meaning that this value could be much, much higher in, in reality. Now moving on to population decline. Officially, Ukraine is in a demographic crisis. Ukraine has a particularly high death rate and a low birth rate, traditional signs of poverty and an inadequate health care system. In fact, the population of Ukraine has been declining since the 1990s by over 150,000 people every year. Life expectancy of the average Ukrainian has plummeted and continues to do so due to pollution, a failing health care system, bad diets, mainly due to poverty, smoking and alcoholism. The country's population is one of the fastest declining in the world. Interestingly, since the dissolution of the USSR till 2001, this is only a small period of 10 years, the population declined by 3 million people, or about 5.7% of the population of Ukraine. However, there's no talk of genocide here. Moving on to poverty, 58.3% of Ukrainians live below the poverty line as of 2016. This value rose heavily in the 90s, fell slightly in late 2000, and came back up recently. The lowest level post-Soviet Ukraine has ever seen hovered around 20-25% to below the poverty line, meaning one in every four to five people lived under the poverty line, having difficulty paying for food, affording rent, attending some sort of an educational institute, etc. In certain parts of Ukraine, families spend up to 80% of their income on food alone. Ukrainian children are the ones most affected by these statistics. 
On top of all this, Ukrainians have lost nearly half of their purchasing power, meaning they can afford half the stuff. And inflation is consistently rising, furthering the misery of poor Ukrainians and heavily affecting more well-off Ukrainians. The average monthly wage per employee in 2013 was 3,265 hryvnia. In 2014, it was 3,480. In 2015, 4,207. In two years, the average monthly wage increased by 28.85%, which seems impressive, right? Well, during the same period, the official price level increased by 78.98%. So let me just repeat that. Wages increased by 28.8%, while prices increased by 78.9%. The population has officially become poorer by a third, but in reality, it's much more. The population became poorer twice as fast as the rate of GDP declined. Healthcare in Ukraine is currently extremely neglected, with a severe lack of medicines and proper facilities. In contrast, Soviet-era healthcare was considered amongst the best in the world. Soviet Ukraine had numerous state-of-the-art facilities and the industrial base necessary to produce all sorts of medicines, which they did. Monday Ukraine, however, has crumbling infrastructure and domestically produces very few drugs, if any at all. Monday Ukraine supposedly has a free healthcare system, but a particular problem in certain parts of the country is that doctor's salaries are extremely, almost ridiculously low, and hence many doctors demand a fee from patients in order for them to be treated. This puts Ukrainian patients in a very tight place as they too have low wages and sometimes cannot afford the fees the doctors charge. Health centers in Ukraine are in an extremely poor state. Medical equipment and facilities are in short supply and in high demand. All services, including doctors and nurses, cost a lot of money, which makes healthcare and health centers not always a feasible option for the ordinary Ukrainian. Short staffing is particularly bad, as many doctors and nurses have gone abroad where wages and living standards are higher, hence resulting in dirty, low-quality hospitals. Private clinics are expensive and hence not usually an attractive option for poor Ukrainians. As for vaccination, modern-day Ukraine has a very low vaccination rate. It's actually kind of scary. As of late 2016, only 30% of children are immunized against measles, 10% against hepatitis B, and only 3% against pertussis and tetanus. Ukraine has the lowest routine immunization rate in the world, at least as of 2016. On top of all this, Ukraine has one of the largest growing AIDS epidemics in the world, with over 700,000 Ukrainians infected. Again, children are a particular target, as HIV transmission between mother and child is on the rise in Ukraine. Keep in mind that these values are only for confirmed cases, and the UN believes that real numbers of infected Ukrainians are much, much higher. The reason for the spread has uh, many root causes, but it mainly occurred after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, in which drugs and drug traffickers flooded into the country and, taking advantage of the horrendous living standards and poverty, made many addicts of the Ukrainian population. Through the sharing of needles and other unhygienic practices, HIV and AIDS spread. Recently, however, sexual modes of transmission have surpassed drug use, but only very recently. Interestingly, many of these diseases were previously non-existent during the Soviet era, but have appeared in modern-day Ukraine mainly due to the sheer poverty and lack of prosperity brought about by the capitalist transition. Another interesting note is that drug trafficking and the use of drugs in general was harshly suppressed by the Soviet Union, which is why the USSR never really had any problem with AIDS to begin with. But many politicians in modern-day independent Ukraine made money off of the misery of Ukrainians. Prisoners in Ukraine are heavily represented in these problems too up to 30% of which test positive for HIV and up to 95% positive for hepatitis C. This on top of the already horrific treatment and environment within Ukrainian prisons, yet some people still complain about gulags. Moving on to faith in the government and the president. The current president of Ukraine, Poroshenko, has reached approval ratings lower than his predecessor, the deposed president Yanukovych. It isn't only in the more quote-unquote Russian parts either, this is all over the country. So much for Maidan, right? Ukrainians have little faith in their government too, unsurprisingly. I won't even start on the corruption in Ukraine. Interesting note, while researching some things for this video, I came across an article by the Kiev Post titled The Most Successful Foreigners in Ukraine. Let me just read out a few anecdotes from this cancerous piece. Quote, Some get homesick and return to their native lands. Others experience failure and leave virtually unnoticed. Only a select few rise to the top and stay, influencing their adopted nation in profound ways. This is their story. Yeah, by robbing the Ukrainian people, rising to the top of my ass. Quote, I can't imagine Ukraine without them. 
Anna Derevyenko, executive director of the European Business Association, said of expats living in Ukraine, they're model citizens, especially the young ones, who show that with hard work, you can succeed. Yeah, hard work and millions of dollars that daddy gave them. Quote, by our count, the richest foreigners created more than 10,000 jobs. They say this as if this is an impressive accomplishment. Wow, 10,000 jobs! It's not like millions are unemployed or anything. Quote, many have attempted to introduce the best business practices from abroad and implant them in Ukraine, with mixed results in a nation that is still suffering from a Soviet hangover. All right. After 30 years, I don't think you can still be blaming things as I don't think it's fair to continue blaming the Soviet Union for your problems. Maybe you need to start looking somewhere else. Alright, thank you for watching. This was my first video ever. I hope that you liked it. Please give me suggestions. Tell me if I was too monotone. Tell me if this was too long. Any constructive criticism would be appreciated. Thanks for watching.